Google Analytics language reporting. So language reports are going to break our audience down into their preferred language and give us relevant metrics. To access this report, you're going to go audience, geo, and then language. Let's take a look at the language report. The dimension we get down the left-hand column for language is based on the user's browser settings. That's where we get this information from. Um, and what we do see is that on our example website that English from the United States is the most common language, although we do see a good amount of traffic from other countries that also speak English and then other languages entirely. Some of the things we want to look at on this particular report is just getting a feeling for our audience and you know what their preferred language is. Uh, I like to say if, if you're seeing a good amount of traffic from a language that you don't even support on your website, it may be time to start supporting that because for whatever reason, whether it's through your advertising, it could be organic search, um, you know, backlinks you've gotten, you're driving traffic and to support all types of traffic as much as you can, um, you know, when technically feasible is always a good idea. Um, next, we're going to look at the location report, and that's going to give us a little bit more information. But first, let's just look at this. Uh, for example, English from the U.S., we saw about 1,300 visits, and that accounts for about 76% of our traffic. Uh, as far as transactions go, we see about 87% of transactions for about $1,300. We also see that English from Great Britain sending traffic as well, only about 8%. We did see a couple orders from it, though, which is encouraging for $114. Now back to what we were talking about, you know, our website does not support Great Britain, does not, does not translate to the pound, so it's something that we may want to consider as about 10% of our traffic is there. Might be something that we would convert better if we had done. Um, we do see that the conversion rate's a little bit lower. Um, you know, our shipping costs uh, may be something that affect that as well, so we, we may want to consider lightening up shipping costs outside the country because we do have a good amount of traffic there. Just some of the things you might want to think about when looking at this report. In some situations, it's not incredibly useful, but there are some ways to use this data. Google Analytics location reporting. So the location reports let us look at the geographical location of where our users are browsing from. So to access this, you're going to go on the left nav, audience, geo, and then location. So we first get to location report, we get a very high level view of all the different countries that our traffic comes from. In this example, we can see that United States accounts for about 63% of our traffic, which is actually kind of surprising because our website is purely United States focused. Um, some other common countries we do see are the UK, Australia, Canada, and the list goes on. At this level, we get just some, you know, the very basic metrics of uh, traffic and behavior and conversions. And we see that, you know, most of our conversions are coming from the US, but we are seeing conversions from other countries as well. One of the great things about this report is the drill down feature. So we can click on United States and now we're going to drill down to the state level. As we get to the state report, we could compare different states, the same sets of metrics and drill down even further. So we're going to jump into California here and we're going to get city specific metrics. So which of these reports are useful to you really depends on the type of business. If you're an international site and you are regularly hosting traffic from around the world, you might want to look at the more macro view. For many smaller businesses, um, US-based businesses, you're really just going to look a lot more at some of the local reporting. So let's say you're a dry cleaner. You're not going to be particularly interested in traffic that comes from outside of your state. This city report that we're looking at might be really interesting. If I'm in a specific city and I'm getting a lot of traffic from it, that's great. But what if I'm not? What if a lot of my traffic is coming from a few cities away that are just a little too far for me to service? I may want to look at things like what's driving that traffic. Why am I getting a lot of traffic from 30 miles away when I want a lot more traffic from five miles away? Um, you know, some the makeup site that we're dealing with today, we do want to look at, I think, a more macro view. So I'm going to just jump back to the countries view and we can look at some takeaways there. So some of the takeaways and some things that I might want to look at in this particular example are noting that as a makeup site that purely services the United States, only 63% of, of my traffic comes from the United States. So I've got this whole bulk of traffic that got roughly half of my traffic, right, is from other countries. So we may want to look at things like how can we better support the UK, Australia, and Canada? So in terms of um, not just driving traffic because we have it already, but just converting that traffic. So do we want to convert to their currencies? Do we want to put global calls to action that let people know that we ship to their country? Do we want to make shipping prices a little you know, more appealing so that we can 
improve some of those conversion rates. We do see in Australia that we had a pretty good conversion rate, but the UK, which is probably a bigger opportunity for us, um, you know, about half a percent, which is substantially lower than the site average. So again, with each property, you want to analyze different things, but you just kind of want to be logical about it and find those outliers and look for opportunities.